All right. So there we heard it from Erwin Francis, who gave us a comprehensive update in terms of what's going to be happening with the Champions League. But we have our first guest online this evening on Sports Overflow to the United States of America, Brian Walters, who has been involved in American cricket for almost three decades and counting, and mainly in the, the Texas area. He now sits on the United States of America Cricket Development Committee and is also on the Constitutional Review Working Committee. And my co-pilot tonight, Angel Leonard, who's all the way in Zimbabwe, could make it. But Brian has decided to step in here on Sports Overflow. Brian, good evening. Welcome to Sports Overflow. And it's a pleasure in having you here joining my co-host, Erwin Francis, in Antigua Barbuda. How is Texas? Texas is fantastic. And thank you very much for having me. really appreciate the opportunity to talk to both of you. But all things considered, I'd prefer to be in the Caribbean right now. We will send you a plane ticket on JetBlue. <laughs> don't worry, we'll get you down. We'll get you. Down, we'll get you down for Christmas. Don't, 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 I'll, don't. I'll take it. With, I'll take it whenever you can send it. <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't worry about that, Brian. Anything is possible right now. Brian, talk to us. Right. Cricket. Um, most likely, I'm sure you have some background from the Caribbean. Um, so give us an overview of Brian Walters. Brian Walters. Well, at least I'm probably the best cricketer in my family, <laughs> as far as it goes. But um, born in Jamaica, my father is probably the biggest cricket fan you'll ever meet. And so I basically grew up with the sport. Played it in Jamaica. I left Jamaica at an early age. I left when I was 14. And so somehow managed to live here in the U.S. from age 14 to age 30 without knowing that cricket was being played here. But once I discovered the league, I was living in Houston at the time. Once I discovered the league, almost it was like a, a duck to water, right? I got right back in and played until I got, as I tell everybody, until I got too old and fat to play. And now these days I am involved and on the administrative side of things. Uh, several years where I've been not only a member of the a director on the national governing body, but currently serve on several committees. And then, you know, recently with the advent of minor league crickets, I've been able to assist with the commentating side of things also. So all of that means, and all of that to say, I, I'm a big cricket fan who just happens to be in a position to, to do some good for the sport here in this country. You look like a fast bowler. Am I right? You absolutely nailed it. Left arm over. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a coach, um, so coaches coaches always have an eye for, for talent. You know, you, 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 you just look too tall to be an opening batsman. You know what I mean? So I I, I, I couldn't go down that road with you. <laughs> you, would, you would not want me opening the batting free side, but you certainly in my old in my younger days I was a decent opening bowler. Yes, uh, Brian, you've seen it all. Um, give me your overview of of USA cricket. I I know the good news has been announced a couple of weeks ago that the United yep. States of America will be teaming up with Cricket West Indies to host the T20 World Cup in 2024. I had my first taste. In fact, the USA, when they came out to the Caribbean to play in the Super 50 2019, yep. the series between Leeward's Hurricanes and USA was 1-1. I think you guys beat us in the last game. So I, I always remember that. So I've been very close with USA cricket. Shabani Basco, sure. who was the women's captain, United States of America, um, played for the Leeward Islands. So we, we have a relationship between the Leeward Islands Cricket Board and USA Cricket. But yeah. my first real taste was sitting next to Andrew Leonard and commentating the United States of America against Bermuda. And I almost thought that I was in a, a, a boxing match. I mean, I couldn't believe, Elwin, that it was a cricket game. The tension was so high. <laughs> Um, but it, I was given a baptism of my life, you know what I mean? I didn't realize how tense it was until when Andrew gave me the history lesson of what happened in 2019. And then I said, oh, okay, all right. So I had to come to grips in terms of um, America's cricket. But yeah. overall from that, are you pleased as to where USA cricket is today? I am pleased in the sense we have several challenges in this country for cricket. Number one, we have such a vast country. You know, from California to New York is over 3,000 miles. There's so much quality cricket being played in this country, but getting everybody to pull together in the same direction has always been a challenge. In the last several months, let's call it the last year or so, things have started flowing in the direction that will mean that USA cricket is actually a force to be reckoned with. 
it's, it's, it's really easy sometimes to overlook the fact that the USA is one of the largest cricket markets in the world, right? India obviously is number one. Depending on how you measure it, US is always going to be either two or three, simply because of the number of people in this country who were born elsewhere. So you have around 15 or so million people in this country who qualify as cricket fans, who know the sport and follow it to some degree. Our challenge is to be able to sort of start including the rest of 300 million people in this country to recognize that this is also a sport that they can get behind. We've not done a very good job of that in the past. I'd say as recently as two or three years ago, that wasn't much of a priority. We've now started pushing in that direction. I won't bore you with the politics, but let's just say there's a much more functional group in charge right now running cricket and we're best poised in the position to be able to leverage the tremendous amount of talent that exists in this country. Now, for, before I get Erwin to come in, you, you talked yeah. about the challenges and there's minor league cricket. There's so many different leagues. So, so break them down for me because sometimes I get a little bit confused. Everything comes up on my phone and then I hear that uh, <laughs> this league is taking place and then this next T20 league and it's, it's so much things happening. So everything right now, based on what we're talking about, is supposed to be under yeah. one umbrella, but we're still having a challenge. The short version of the response would be that Ace American Cricket Enterprises is the is sort of a sister organization, a partner organization with USA Cricket. And they are who minor league and eventually major league cricket, they'll fall under that umbrella. And that's one piece. The other piece is that you have several different uh, organizations, leagues throughout the country that put on their own tournaments. So at any one weekend, let's say in the summer, you, you might find five or six different major tournaments going on at any one point in time. And so that type of activity is one that attracts cricketers, not just from throughout the US, but from the Caribbean, from Pakistan, India, from several different places. But if you want to think of it in terms of what is under the auspices of the national governing body, when the USA cricket team takes the field, that team is representing USA cricket. When minor league cricket and then major league cricket starts being played again, then that is under the auspices of ACE, American Cricket Enterprises. You know, it's really easy to sort of get bogged down in those types of details. Just from a bird's eye view, the most important thing to me is that we're playing cricket at a major level in this country and we're inviting more and more people to be able to assist us in, in, in that effort. What's, what about the youth development programs? Because I, I realize that that is also a very big, that's, that's been active now straight across America. So as usual, um, the U.S. leading the way and building from the bottom up and not from the top down. That is such an important piece. And you mentioned uh, when you introduced me, and I appreciate your words, that I'm a member of the development committee. Without a doubt, that is the most important piece of any cricket in this country. And I always try to use soccer as a, or football as, um, as sort of a measuring stick to how cricket needs to be in this country. When I moved here in 1982, cricket and football were exactly at the same place, which is to say nobody knew anything about either one. Over the years, football has grown so much and become so much more as a part of the mainstream in this country in terms of the sporting scene that not only every weekend when you drive around, you see kids playing football all over the place, but my own son went to school on a football scholarship, right? Cricket is far behind, but we're starting to catch up with that gap. And the way that you catch up with that gap is that you don't just jump straight to the point where you're having a T20 league and looking to bring players from the Caribbean or India or South Africa. That piece is important. But the other piece that's important is that you're also building the game from the ground up. And the way that you do that is through youth development. It, it's, it truly is exciting to me to be able to say that several players who featured in the national championships last week were people or kids who came up through our system. You know, if I might say, I would say the name Stephen Taylor, if you follow USA Cricket, you probably know that name. Stephen Taylor is exciting opening bats. He's probably 28 or so years old by now, but he was born here in the US and grew up playing cricket, Jamaican heritage, but born in the US, grew up playing cricket here. The 
tournament was just finished. Um, the leading batter for the entire tournament is a 17-year-old kid named Rahul Jarawala. So those are the things that I'm trying to hopefully explain to you that the more we invest in kids, the more we are able to provide them the opportunities to showcase their talents, then the better overall USA cricket will be. Look, if we're looking to play, um, you know, in a tournament, you want the best 11 on the park at any one point in time. But a major piece of development for the future is being able to increase the number of youth who are playing. And then when they're ready, bring them onto the national stage. It's something that I cannot overstress. Is there a Legends tournament in the US? I think there has been a Legends tournament. So you look uh, like you can bowl some good leg spin. So <laughs> I, I see you tweaking your fingers. I'll, I'll hand you over to my, my co-host, Erin Francis. <laughs> it would be an insult to my heritage as a Jamaican to ask me to bowl spin. <laughs> From a left arm fast bowler to a leggy left arm spinner. <laughs> That would be an interesting transition. <laughs> but do you know, um, it's it, it's not far fetched, you know, because the slow ball yeah. is now a very important delivery in the armory of the fast bowler these days. So, I mean, you never know. Mm. I don't think it's as difficult to transition that someone might 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 feel. I believe once you get on the practice pitch and you develop yeah. your craft, it's very 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 much possible. It's um, not a matter of not being able to do it, you know. It's a matter of having the ego subside because when I'm accustomed to coming in off a 20, 25, 30 yard run up, to ask me to take two steps and then turn my arm over is something I just couldn't live with. <laughs> <laughs> well, you could turn into a fast bowling spinner, you know. You can run up from far and <laughs> take all the. <laughs> I mean. <laughs> Do you know? <laughs> I'm not trying to be funny, but do you know they have yeah. some fast bowlers? They're running faster than how they bowl. Yeah, they yeah absolutely. I, look, exactly. I, I, so I, I myself. well, in, in India had one <laughs> called Madan Lala. Yes, yes, uh, Madan Lala is a good example. Yeah. So you you know you just never know that. But you see, I was going down the road because Brian was saying that these days he's sort of put on some weight X Y Z. So I see him tweaking his fingers all the time. So I know it would have been a lot more easy for him to come from a couple of steps. Brian, tell him there's <laughs> such a thing as father time. See, so... <laughs> Look, he, he father time That's wins right. all battles. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> now, I, um, I want to piggyback on something that you had said earlier on. We know that the U.S. population, the claim is over 333 million people. You... Yep. You reminded us that it's just around 200,000 people are playing the game now in the U.S. I want to know mm -hmm. how many of the states, when I'm, I'm talking about the states in terms of that good competitions are being played, in terms of the right. competition in the United States, which states you would right. consider the major cricket is being played in? Could you give a list of those states for us? Without question, the best cricket, uh, the highest level of cricket that is played in this country is played on either coast. So if you start on the West Coast from all the way up in Washington State, all the way down to Southern California, tremendous amount of cricket. Mm -hmm. Then skip over the middle of the country, start in the Northeast in New York, <clears throat> excuse me, and come all the way down to Florida. That's generally where you'll see the best cricketers because that shouldn't be a surprise because that's mostly the areas where immigrants move to. The one sort of um, exception to that would be in the Dallas area, not too far away from me here. I'm in Austin. About 200 miles north of me is Dallas. Dallas actually has a tremendous amount of cricket. They actually have two major cricket leagues there. <clears throat> Excuse me, each team or each league having north of 40 teams. So there's a tremendous amount of cricket there. And if you follow USA Cricket at all, you know that USA Cricket, the organization recently, or purchased and is in the process of repurposing a former minor league baseball stadium right in the Dallas area. And it's going to be one of our major cricket centers going forward. But I guess to answer your question specifically, you can start in California, you can end up in New York. Those are going to be, and Florida, those are going to be your best um, cricket centers in terms of talent. And cricket in the USA is being driven by 
immigrants, expatriates who have migrated to the country? Would that be a fair assessment? That is a fair assessment and that exemplifies our number one challenge in terms of development. Because in the past, we've been sort of, we've kept it to ourselves in the immigrant community. And we've not done a good enough job of taking it to the larger population. One thing that anybody will note about America and Americans, they don't have to understand the sport that is being played. As long as they get the sense that you are supporting or you're playing on behalf of them, on behalf of their country, they'll support it. I was in Indianapolis for a, a ICC America's tournament several years ago. And it, the, the park in Indianapolis is a wide open park. So the cricket is being played in the middle, but there's, you know, there's opportunity for people to be walking around, people walking the dogs, jogging, that type of thing. And all they needed to do was look over in the middle and see pl uh, some of the players pl wearing red, white, and blue. And that was all that it took for them to show up and start watching. Didn't know anything at all about the sport. Didn't even know what a batter was or a bowler or anything else other than the fact that these people are, are, are playing and supporting the U.S. So from that standpoint, all we need to do, and we're in the process of doing this now, is make an exerted effort to reach out to that wider community, the wider sporting community. And number one, we will build fans that way, build a strong fan base that way. And then number two, while we may not build or create the next Brian Lara, the next Sachin Tendulkar, we will eventually find people, kids, who are good enough at the sport to be able to play it at the level, potentially even at the representative level. So the challenge has been met in my mind. Some of this information is public and some of it is not, but we're working very hard to be able to bring cricket to that wider community. And I think it will start, it will start to pay dividends very soon. Sure, because I'm 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 happy you um you're tapping into that because I was just wondering if people are gravitating to seeing the game being played and they will come and watch. I was gonna ask you the next question. So why aren't more indigenous Americans or even those even other people who have not they have migrated to the US but they're not yeah. from cricketing communities, let's say they're from Europe. Yeah. They also yep. can get involved in the in the game because what readily comes to my mind, I think part of the reason why soccer has taken off in the USA is this notion about the soccer mom situation where you have parents, especially the mothers, who religiously takes their children to these soccer academies or whatever is being played. And you know if the child has the support of a parent, most often than not, the child will do well than the child who really do not have that sort of parental guidance and support behind. So, so I, I, I believe that maybe it's not too late what you did say that you're trying to reach out, but I'm wondering how difficult it is to get involved in a sport. Is it a matter that the game might be too long and, and, and we know the American culture, they want it over in a two, three hours, and then you go yeah. home, go, and so is that a challenge? I think the length of the game is much less a factor. You know, you can always do things to manipulate, that's probably not the right word, to change some of the, the features of the game to make it more palatable or make it more digestible, right? So let's say when the kid is 10 years old, you can play T10s, right? A T10 will be over an hour and a half, two hours, and everybody gets to go home happy. I think the bigger issue is that we have not always demonstrated that there is a pathway in this country for cricket to continue, for, for cricketer to continue along an established path. Mm -hmm. I'll give you a, an example. I used my older son earlier as, um, as, as an example of what you can do if you're good at soccer or football. My younger son I'll use now as another example who was equally good at cricket and football, right? Played both for a long time, but at some point you have to get to the point where you choose a direction. Mm -hmm. And the direction that he chose to go in, and nobody can fault him for this, is that he wanted to go the direction that his older brother did in being able to continue playing football, 
to get to where you get a scholarship, have your schooling paid for, and then potentially like his older brother now play, uh, plays football professionally. That is a very clear, defined, a clearly defined path in football that mm -hmm. today does not exist in cricket. Mm -hmm. And so while he is a tremendous cricket fan, he and I are up three o'clock in the morning watching cricket anytime it's being played overseas, and he can tell you about any of the players and all of that, but he had to sort of stop playing because the pathway did not exist. One of the primary reasons why I am personally involved in youth development is because I made a commitment to myself that I need to make sure that if there is a kid in this country who can play cricket, the lack of the proper structure allowing him to play, him or her to play as long as they want or need to, should not be the reason why they have to stop playing the game. In other words, we have to do what we can to make sure that that structure exists that you can offer a cricket scholarship to somebody going to, you know, University of Denver, University of Miami. Hey, come here. We can give you a cricket scholarship. If we don't pay for the entire thing. We can at least, you know, give you a, a few thousand dollars a year. Or you can, with the advent now of the different uh, leagues that are being played around, let's say minor league and then eventually major league, maybe that itself can be another opportunity for a child who's good enough to eventually get to play. So the bottom line there is, the structure of cricket in this country has to be consistent with being able to get more and more kids to play. And then those who have shown the aptitude to be able to go beyond, you know, a lower level, we can't not have that kid go on to a higher level because the, the organization isn't defined in the way that it would need to be. So that's a major piece of the puzzle. I'm glad you highlighted that because that's the direction in which we're moving in. Okay, sticking to that point in terms of getting more people involved, we know yeah. that any country, any major sporting discipline that that country excel in, one of the things that you would find is that they are, let's say, grassroots development. Mm -hmm. They are into schools, and you see a process of development there. We know that the college circuit in America is huge. Prior to college, there are a number of high schools and, you know, the development. USA Cricket, have they been able to get cricket be part of curriculums in these, maybe if not at the college level? What about high school, <coughs> boarding school? Because I think that is also an avenue. If you get it there in that curriculum, I think you more than likely will succeed in spreading this game to even more states in the United States. Well, if your career as a sports announcer doesn't work out, maybe you can come help us with development because that's exactly the pathway that we're on. We have recently signed an agreement with a company called Alacria out of Australia. And their number one um, skill set is being able to design programs for uh, to introduce a sport to kids in non-traditional countries. So in other words, <clears throat> excuse me, a year from now, when the program with Alacria gets up and running, and we're probably about maybe two months away from it being operational, you'll be able to go into a school, into the Boys and Girls Club, into the YMCA, mm -hmm. and say, here, this is a new sport called cricket. Uh, we are able to have you have it introduced to you. Here are some fun activities. You won't be wearing uh, uh, pads and, and gloves the first day. There's just some silly sort of fun drills that you can do and then the next step further down the line once you get accustomed to that level of, of, of activity is here let's add on another piece mm -hmm. let's show you how to bowl properly with a straight arm then the next piece after that let's show you how to strategize when do you want to bring on an off spinner when, when do you want to bring on a leg spinner those are the things that you do do to slowly introduce the game and you're introducing it at the school level you and i both know that trying to keep teach, uh, let's say, an 18-year-old to bowl is extremely hard. Mm -hmm. But trying to teach a six-year-old to bowl is much, much easier. Mm -hmm. And then you start at that level and then start bringing them along such that, again, even though it's not going to be an easy process because, you know, there's several other activities that kids can be a part of in, in this country. But you get to the point where more and more of them start being introduced to the sport, mm -hmm. learning the skills, and then it just doesn't have to be people who fit my profile or my kids' 
profile where you're sort of you know, you're immersed into the sport at an early age just because you were born with it. The next step is being able to make sure that kids who have no prior affiliation with the sport can be introduced to it in some form, whether it be schools or the boys and girls clubs or YMCA's or or little league or however we do it. And that's that's of course something that's still going to be worked on. But you bring those kids along, and then you create an entirely different new fan base, which is again the the, the, the primary aim. Very well. No. Finally, before I hand you back over to Springer, because I believe we are due for a break shortly. In terms of the competition, the competitions being held in the U.S. is exclusively mm -hmm. T20 cricket? With one exception. We just had the national championships last week. The national championships were 50 over matches. You know, everybody these days says that T20 is the way to go. And, you know, you never get an American to, to uh, enjoy the longer form of the game. I disagree with that. I think it's probably likely that the predominant form of the game in this country will be T20. But I think there's room for 50 over cricket. I actually think there's room for test cricket. It's not going to be easy. But I've heard feedback from several American friends of mine who say that they enjoy the intrigue and the sort of the mental mm -hmm. aspect of test cricket more so than the, you know, the slam bam thank you man type of cricket that you get from uh from t20 mm -hmm. so uh, to answer your question t20 on the weekend let's say if it's you know july 4th weekend and there's a tournament somewhere that tournament is going to be a t20 tournament but the national championships was 50 over obviously a different skill set but you're exposing the players to a different type of cricket and then i think eventually you know all things going in the direction that we would like for them to go I think five to ten years from now, we would we can actually get to the point where we're building a test side. Excellent. I know. I know. <laughs> I know that is going to be um, some serious work to really put into that. But uh, you question. guys sold your own springs. Absolutely. Good chat. Good chat. Just before I, I, you know, I let Brian get off the hook. Just want to be able to salute our sponsors. Sports Overflow is powered by Twist Fitness Center and Athletes Foot, Carbon Alliance Insurance Company Limited, Dem Sports Limited, iMobile Antigua Vision Care, AG Morgan Men's Collection, and Andrew Wholesale Agents for Dutch Lady Milk and Altitude. Now, Brian, the poster boy has to be Ali Khan, am I right? Boy, if you say American cricketer, Ali Khan would be the first name that comes to mind in just about everybody's mind who follows USA cricket. I, Ali has played all over the world, plays in the in CPL, obviously a major star here in the US. I'm going to go back to something I said a few minutes ago, about 10 or 15 minutes ago. The young star of this most recently completed uh, national championship is 17-year-old Rahul Jariwala. And as much as you easily say the name right now, Ali Khan, two years from now, three years from now, the first name that will come to your mind will be Rahul Jariwala. Remember that and watch out for him. Hmm. All right. So I've already started to do my homework on that one because Andrew Lena did send me that name. And while yeah. we are names, I know you have a couple of other names. So you, go ahead. We, we're listening. <sighs> Look. I told you several minutes ago that I used to be and still fancy myself right here to be a good opening left arm fast bowler. One young fast bowler who featured very heavily in the recently concluded minor league tournament. His name is Laksh Parikh, L-A-K-S-H-P-A-R-I-K-H. And maybe it's because I am physically close to him. He lives in Houston and goes to school right here in Austin. He's a youngster, 18 years old, picked up a, uh, for, the, for a major part of the tournament, was the leading wicket taker in the tournament. Doesn't blow you away with pace, but has the accuracy to be able to lead his team in the, the way that it needs to be led. I think that's another name that somebody that you're going to have to pay attention to. And of course, you'll have a, 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 a smattering of former international players who are now going to are looking to ply their trade here in this country, which I think is a great, um, a great initiative. People like Corey Anderson and Dane, Dane Pete, names like that, that you'd have heard already. And I'll tell you why that piece is important is because not only do they play in the various leagues and the various tournaments around the country, 
but they're all also involved in development. And so if you are having, a, 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 if you have a youth academy and you can have a Corey Anderson or a Dane Pete or a Obas Pinar come and talk to the kids and not only just coach them, but just sort of give them a sense of what it's like to play cricket at a higher level. That's another piece that I think is really important and that will help in developing the minds of young cricketers as well. And that's why we have um, our own Antiguan heritage, Karim Ago. So that's 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 a that's a good block that you're talking about there. So a little Caribbean connection. Finally, on on your spell, uh-huh. there have been a number of U.S. cricketers, not only U.S. but there are a number of Caribbean cricketers who have journeyed across to the U.S. 2021, including Shane Darish, Canal Lewis, num- number of players. Um, yep. We even had players from Antigua and Barbuda. I show about five to six guys who came across and, and played in the in the different respective leagues. Is this yep. going to be the norm going forward? Where we going to have an influx of of Caribbean cricketers coming across to play in those respective T Twenty leagues? I don't know that I can declaratively state that is going to be the norm, but I can also state that we in the Caribbean play cricket with a certain amount of flair. And it's something that everybody in this country who is a cricket fan likes to see. So I think there's always going to be a natural attraction to uh, to having people from the Caribbean. Uh, one name that you didn't call just now, but somebody who came up and played a few times in a couple of times in Houston, Rakim Cornwall. Rakim came here and played a few matches in Prairie View a couple uh, last towards the middle of this year. I think early spring towards summer, and the fan following that he himself has and then maybe slightly to a lesser extent the canar lewis's and 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 the dowriches and those that you just called you're always going to have that sort of attraction for people from the caribbean plus logistically it's easier to get players here from the caribbean than say from the middle east from india or or anywhere else like that so from that standpoint i think you'll always have that attraction for people from the caribbean And, and look i love seeing them get the opportunity because the opportunity isn't always what it needs to be back home and if there's an opportunity if there's a window for them to come up and play then more power to them and again the more we can succeed in flying the caribbean flag high the west indian flag high at the same time that we're assisting in developing u.s cricket then i'm all for it brian walters we want to thank you very much for joining us on sports overflow on the inaugural program for you and for usa yes, cricket um, as you know Sports Overflow, Elwin Francis and myself, and our technician, Arnold Keegan-James. Our mission is to really educate folks in terms of what is happening all around the world. And so it is important. We realize that our next door neighbor is the United States of America. And so we have to begin to start to educate and dream for some of these young boys and girls to let them know that there's a pathway and another opportunity. And it was really indeed a pleasure having you on the program and giving us an insight in terms of USA cricket and how far it has come. We wish you all the best and it won't be the last because in 2022, we'll make sure that we have you giving us an update in terms of what's going to be happening. I'm all about it. Just let me know when more than happy to be a part of this. And thank you so much for inviting me. Hey, God bless you. You have a good one. And don't forget, right? um, Begin to practice in the garage. (laughs) <laughs> hey listen what are these <laughs> <laughs> alright take care gentlemen alright thank you